shot. One opportunity to seize everything you ever wanted. One moment. All right, fellas, welcome to this week in the Omaha Fail for week 13. It is, uh, season's flying by. It's like it's almost over, and it uh, seems like we just started not long ago. We got Wynn in the house. Welcome to the show, Wynn. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm glad you could join me, so I'm not doing this all alone. I got a couple basketballs on the TV, a couple basketball games on the TV. You got the Tigers playing, you got the Pelicans playing. Week 13 in the OMFL, got a good run in tonight before the rain started. Now it's time for a good show. So I'm looking forward to a good night. How are things for you? Uh, things are all right. I uh, surprisingly got my game in a day early and kind of happy about that and just kind of enjoying the rest of the night before Friday hits. Well, there you go. Well, let's just jump right in this and uh, see if we can't tag team a couple of games and, and – uh, Maybe even so, since I'm not talking to myself tonight, I could do a game. You could do a game. We can kind of break one down back and forth and just kind of see how things go. So let's just jump right in here. It's week 13. I'm telling you, the playoffs are going to be here before we even know it. It's going to be the off season. It's funny because the way it works here is you're a champion for about three minutes, and then everybody starts trading, and the off season is here, and free agent talk has started up, and then before you know it, we're drafting. You blink and it's already the new season and people forgot that you even won a championship. So here we are, week 13, the first game off the dock. You got the Ravens losing to the Red Hot Steelers. The Steelers actually beat me this week. It's still a sensitive subject. It's way too soon, but they are red hot. They dropped the Ravens, who have won some pretty good games lately, 23-3 to at home for the Steelers. And uh, this game was all about the Steelers' defense. They've just played some tremendous defense. They only allow 92 yards passing, 38 yards rushing. They get three sacks. They, they, they do not get any turnovers, and they do turn the ball over. But when you're playing that great of a defense, uh, you're only allowing 12% on third down. Um, it's kind of hard to not lose those kinds of games. Joe Flacco goes for 110, but he's only 8 for 19. Uh, Andre Ellington after starting out red hot for the Ravens. He only gets 12 carries today for 38 yards, whereas on the other side, two carries for 127. Big Ben has a decent day. He goes 13 for 20 with two touchdowns. Uh, but this was all about the defense. The, the uh, Steelers just fly around the ball. Um, they, they tend to uh, eat the clock up with that kind of rushing game, and they just kind of make you play – Really ugly. The Steelers with a, a really nice win here uh, against the Ravens. What are your thoughts on this game? Well, I've played both these teams this year, and uh, I know Webb is playing uh, some tremendous defense in uh, in Baltimore. He uh, he held Arian Foster. He's one of the few to hold Arian Foster below 50 yards rushing this year. And uh, uh, it's going to be bad playing well right now. Uh, played him. I think I think we might be having some connection issues. You're breaking, hey, you're breaking up really, really bad. I don't know if it's on my end or if others are uh, are hearing that also, but it's breaking up really bad on my end. And I, I, we got done in, in D Money in the chat. If you guys can hear when, let me know. I, I know W Don said he can't hear anything, but I can hear you. You just started to break up really bad. Let's go ahead and just move on to the next game give you a minute it's the technical demons we worked really hard on this the other day thought we had it figured out but i know that we'll get that mic figured out speaking of where we're going to move on to his game he drops the Bengals 27 to 3 the broncos are super hot fellas 11 and 2 uh for those Denver broncos they whip up on those struggling Bengals. they get two takeaways and they only allow seven yards passing i I don't know how accurate that is, but that's what happened. Uh, Johnny Fisher has another solid day, 162, two touchdowns. Typical day for the rookie uh, in the office. Arian Foster, 17 carries for 112. Roy Palmer, 20 yards passing, five completions on the day. That's not good. No bueno there. That's just not going to work for you at all. 
You're not going to win many games whenever your quarterback is playing like that. And the Broncos just get another well-rounded game. Percy Lattimore with three tackles and two sacks. Uh, Von Miller, two forced fumbles. Those are frustrating. Those are the kind of plays that make you want to throw a controller through a TV. But the Broncos get a big win on uh, at home against the struggling Bengals. When did you get that mic fixed up? Are you able to talk about your game for a second? I guess not. So we're going to give him a few seconds to, uh, to kind of work on that, that mic issue. One second. So he's going to work on that mic issue. We're just going to keep rolling with the show, though. We can't pause. It's a live show. We're going to sound like a bunch of idiots. So the Lions losing barely to the Rams. The Lions have struggled this year after having an impressive run last year, making the playoffs. They dropped by a field goal to the Rams on the road. That was a good game, uh, but just not quite good enough for the Lions. The Rams uh, play tremendous defense, um, and they just do enough on offense to make it work. Uh, D-Money is here. Uh, I'd love for you to chat up a little something, type up a little something here. But Ryan Mallett has a great game. Almost 400 yards passing. Okay, now that I'm looking at these stats, it's kind of telling me all I need. This was probably a sim. D-Money, if you're here, was that a sim? I don't even know if you're still here. Oh, let's not do that. We don't want to cancel that. D-Money, are you still in here? Oh, no, he's not. All right, so anyway, D-Money was here just a minute ago. I'm pretty sure this was a sim because quarterbacks just aren't passing that much and getting that many rushing yards. So we don't really talk about sims. We're going to go ahead and roll right past that as the Lions drop a sim game. Next game on the docket was the Giants uh, falling to the Jets 38-18. to I know that the Giants were out of town, so I'm not even sure that they played this game. We'll take a quick look at the stats just to see if it looks like it was a played game. It might have been. So this was a huge game. I actually thought that this was going to be the game of the week. Uh, Got to be honest, it's been a long week, and I don't really remember, recall what exactly I said was going to happen here. But I did like the Jets to possibly show that the AFC was just a stronger conference this time. And that's what it looks like they did. Brock Osweiler, uh, not a terrible game. I mean, he's 10 for 20. I mean, that's not awesome, but he does pass for almost 200 yards, two touchdowns. Just no rushing game, uh, whereas the law firm of Johnson and Ivory actually rushed the ball really well, almost 200 yards combined for those two. And Geno Smith... Uh, has a great day, 312 yards with a touchdown, four combined touchdowns for the law firm. Um, and then they just play really, really good defense. Uh, Antonio Brown, seven receptions for 120. Uh, Renard Cunningham, have no clue who he is, but he gets five receptions, 175 and two touchdowns. I don't know what happened to uh, their their main target over there, but this guy just steps up and has a huge day. Uh, but the Jets do what the Jets do. They have a great running game when they stay focused to it, and they play tremendous defense. And it sounded like I may have got my buddy back here. Uh, Wynn, are you back with us? Uh, you tell me. Am I back? There you are. You are back. So we were just talking about the Giants and the Jets here, and it looks like that the Jets got a really impressive win. Uh, what are your thoughts about this game? Well, um, I know Pepper's been playing pretty well, but uh, he is playing in the NFC, and right now this year the NFC is just not a very good conference. And to those that are residing in the NFC, all offense is intended. Yeah, it's it's a it, the, the AFC is just, uh, and I mean they're they're the power conference right now. I mean when when you've got Jeremy who you know ran away from us and uh, escaped over to the AFC, and then you got the Commish who went over there with a really young, strong, fast team. Um, I tried to escape. I'm not going to lie. I wanted to be in the AFC. I, I kind of still do want to be in the AFC just to mix it up since I can't have my Saints. But they are definitely the power conference this year. And uh, the Jets get a really impressive win. Next game on the docket is the Jaguars fall into the Raiders. Of course, the Raiders are the Raiders. I mean, they are very impressive. Uh, but they manhandled the Jaguars. The Jaguars have great defense. Uh, but just not enough playmakers to really hang with the Ra uh, Raiders just yet. Four takeaways for the Raiders. They allow under 50 yards rushing. Uh, they do get a sack. Uh, they allow under 50% third down percentage. 
Derek Carr doesn't turn the ball over, whereas Blake Bortles struggled. He does turn the ball over four different times. Not a whole lot to talk about. I did watch a few minutes of this game before I got busy and couldn't watch it anymore. And it just came down to uh, a really good rushing attack from Darren McFadden and, and just solid defense where Blake Bortles has not figured out uh, the OMFL defenses just yet. But I'm telling you, the Jaguars are still a fun team to watch because they just play tremendous defense. Did I, did I lose my co-host again? No, you lost there, his there alter ego. There we go. We gonna, lost his I, alter ego. I would like to say something about this game. Um, the Jaguars, I know people kind of kind of punch down on Norm, and he kind of is the is the bottom feeder right now in that AFC South. But look out because he's got a lot of money in the offseason, and he's got a game plan in place. Uh, I would look for a Jaguars to really bounce back. And with Dunn and the Raiders, you just can't make mistakes. If you make a mistake against Dunn, he's going to make you pay for it. Yeah, I agree. I really like the Jaguars. I really like the Bengals. I know that you beat up on them this week when we talked about your game or you were having those difficulties. But I really like those two teams. And that just shows you how strong the AFC is because those two teams are much better than their record. Next game on the docket is the Panthers falling to the 49ers. This is a bit of a shocker. I think I actually called the Panthers <laughs> to upset the 49ers this week. Um, but it looks like Gaddy kind of got his stuff together for that week. And he whips up on the Panthers uh, really, really well. Three takeaways as that defense shows up again and uh, does what Gaddy's known for. He just plays really great defense. 23 yards rushing. Tremendous. 37 yard, uh, percent on third down is another tremendous stat. And Colin Kaepernick, this has kind of been the Achilles heel. He doesn't have a, a tremendous day, but at least he doesn't turn the ball over. <coughs> Excuse me. And then they go back to their two-headed monster of Williams and Rodgers, start feeding those guys the ball, and they get a really nice win against a strong, strong Panthers team uh, at home. That was a much-needed win. What are your thoughts about this game? Well, I think the Panthers are still. I mean, they they are a good team, but they right now they don't have an identity in the in the backfield. There's no there's no big name back there, and it's really all riding on Cam Newton. If Cam Newton doesn't have an, a stellar game, the Panthers won't win. And Gaddy just plays, like you said, plays great defense. And when Gaddy can play great defense, he doesn't really have to do a whole lot on offense to really get a good W. Yeah, interesting stat, Greg Olson and. Uh, in the league and, and I guess the, the game as a whole that's very uh, tight in easy. Uh, Greg Olson gets two receptions for 115 and a touchdown. Uh, that's what you would call efficient, even though he only had two catches. Uh, he still gets a touchdown and 115 yards. Next game up is the Chargers falling to the Browns on the road, 21-11. to That's kind of a, a weird score there. I think I watched a, a little bit of this game or – possibly seen a, something about possibly a safety or something that was going on there. Uh, but the Browns get a, a good win. I mean, their season is – I don't even know if mathematically they are in it anymore, uh, but they're still trying to string together some wins after a solid start to their season. Things kind of fell apart in the middle, and they're trying to build for next year and get some momentum. Four sacks, a takeaway. They only allow 52 yards rushing. It's kind of um, the formula to win hold teams down to not a lot of rushing yards while you rush the ball very well. Don't turn the ball over, play great defense, and you're probably going to get a win. Uh, Johnny Football, 143 with a touchdown, 13 to 15. That's an impressive, impressive stat. He has a solid day. Uh, the, the rookie Sutton, who's probably the best rookie running back this year, 18 carries for 76 yards. Nothing to really brag about there, but just a solid game. Uh, all around. They play really good defense, and they do just enough on offense. Uh, is there anything that stuck out to you about this game? Um, not really, but I do like the Browns. The Browns are fighting for a division title right now with the Ravens, um, and Demontre Sutton coming back is huge for them. Uh, I played them whenever they had Sutton healthy, and Sutton just kind of ran up and down the field on me. He's one of the few guys that's actually had a really good running attack against me. Um, I like him. I think he's going to be a stud. I would have drafted him if not for the Browns. 
And I think Luis right now is just trying to grow his running attack. He needs to get somebody that can uh, carry the backfield for him. And until he finds that in his quarterback of the future, he's 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 in a tough division. Poor Luis, I feel for him. I really do. Yeah, it's um, it is much like the NFC Central. It's a kind of that division that nobody wants to win. So our next game up is the Falcons fall into uh, our New Orleans Saints, uh, twenty-seven to three. Um, things have just, the wheels have fallen off since early in the season for the Falcons, whereas the Saints are still um, the powerhouse there as they continue to win. Uh, I had just another great defensive game, four sacks, 28 yards rushing, 68 yards passing, uh, and 9% on third down for the Saints defense. That's a pretty good day at the office, to say the least. Matt Ryan, 88 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions, but again, they have zero running game over there in Atlanta. They have to find a running back. But the problem is running backs in the draft so far have not been all that great. He's probably going to have to trade for somebody on the bench uh, somewhere, or he's going to have to try to go out and spend some money in free agency. Drew Brees, uh, that arm is aging, but he still has it. Uh, something left in the tank. 209, three touchdowns. Uh, Darren Sproles, the wheels will be falling off of that kid pretty soon. But he does still have it this year, 25 carries, 80 yards, and the Saints get just a really solid win. A lot of sacks for them uh, and just very, very efficient on third down, which means you can eat the clock up with a running game that rushed the ball uh, 30 times. And so you're eating the clock. Drew Brees has not turned the ball over, and you get a big divisional win for the Saints. What are your thoughts? Uh, this is this is a typical Dave game. Dave's been here since day one on PS3 OMFL, and while he's had years where he hadn't had great success, he's always brought a tremendous defense and he's always brought a run game, and that's pretty much what he's doing right now in New Orleans. Yep. Yes, he just uh, he doesn't do anything spectacular, but he also doesn't make many mistakes. Next, is going to be the Cardinals fall into the Bears, uh, seventeen. Uh, to three. Actually, I thought that was oh, that. No, I played the Steelers this week. That's right. So I've had a couple of really rough games in a row. Um, this was our last game before we got our rookie back, and uh, just no one played well. Uh, I played really good defense, uh, but you cannot stop Adrian Peterson when he carries the ball 33 times. It is kind of my soapbox that I will probably climb on during the offseason. I think that our, our uh, settings are just – it's just too easy. You have some big stud running back, just going to hand him the ball 50 times a game, uh, and you're probably going to win if you don't turn the ball over. That's what Adrian Peterson did. He just kept feeding that kid the ball. I stopped most of the runs. I mean, he only had a long of 23, but, I mean, he carried the ball 33 times. Jay Culler couldn't do anything with 6 or 12, but they played great defense. Uh, turned me over three times playing a lot of zone and uh, just kept feeding Adrian Peterson. And it was just, it was one of the most frustrating games. And it was kind of the game that ended my season. Of course, this week I did an even better job of ending my season, uh, dropping to the Steelers, but they pretty much manhandled me. And uh, I guess I'll turn this one over to you. Well, um, like you, like you've said, and I've listened to a couple of the, uh, of the shows that, uh, you know, it, and I think that the board and, and everybody kind of understands that that fatigue needs to be fiddled with, and I, I think it'll get addressed in the off season. I think you'll see uh, guys having to rely on that number two back, and I would like to see that as well. I mean, even though I have Avery, Arian Foster, I know, and that guy could carry the rock thirty or forty times, but uh, it's it's just one of those things that, that needs to be addressed in the off season. I, I completely agree with you on that regard. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, carried the ball 33 times, and we never even sniffed a backup running back. Next game up is a, a shocker, in my opinion. I think this was my uh, upset of the week, possibly. I, I got to start watching my old shows or recording this somewhere. But I thought uh, the Bucks were going to show up and play a much better game. They get absolutely demolished and manhandled on the road against the Texans, and they fall 34-3. to I did not see that coming. Five takeaways for the Texans, three sacks. They only allow 23 yards rushing. I mean, that's what the Bucs have kind of been known for. They're going to rush the ball really well, and they're going to play some amazing defense. Not today. Five turnovers for Mike Glennon. Um, he just struggled. 
Trent Richardson doing what he does, carrying the ball 99,000 times this year. He gets 25 carries for 89 yards and a touchdown. Tom Savage has a much better game, doesn't turn the ball over, and the Texans get that blowout victory as Chris Clements grabs two of those interceptions. Uh, Kareem Jackson was a solid game, four tackles and an interception. A lot of sacks, a lot of interceptions, and a really long day for the Buccaneers. Basically, Callie just didn't bother to show up for this one. Uh, this is a this is a stinker game for him, and yeah, he he just needs to forget about it, and move on. Doug Martin, ten carries for thirteen yards. Callie, you're better than that. You know better than that. You got to feed that kid the ball more. That's just not going to work. Now, here's the game that caused a lot of discussion last week. We we had our buddy, our pal, uh, Mustang on the show, and and you guys called that he was going to win. I, I couldn't do it because I still think he's got to be around more. I think that he's probably going to go winless this year. I hope it doesn't happen. Hope I'm wrong. But I think I was right on this one and, and you guys are wrong. I'm going to take it. They lose 27 to 24 to the Cowboys who move to a whopping three and nine. Uh, three takeaways for the Cowboys. Um, they don't really do an amazing job on – defense they don't really do an amazing job on offense but Dalton Sam kind of the sleeper of rookie quarterbacks is a pretty decent day he turns the ball over twice but you know what these rookies will do that I proved it Welsh throws five interceptions this week I guess we'll talk about that on Sunday but anyway Dalton Sam three touchdowns almost 300 yards Ryan Tannehill making another cameo appearance two touchdowns but three interceptions you flip-flop those numbers you'll probably get a win here um this just was an ugly game from two teams who are trying to figure out this game and, and uh, figure out their teams. Mike Wallace having an amazing game again. Ten uh, receptions for 122 and a touchdown. He's quietly had a tremendous, tremendous season. But our buddy, our pal, uh, Mustang, loses again. Looking at these stats a little closer, you, you might already know this. I don't know this for sure, but looking at these stats, uh, I'm pretty sure this was another sim game. At least that's the way it looks. But any thoughts on this game? Well, um, yeah, if you look at the stats, it does look kind of weighted for a sim game. But uh, even if it wasn't, uh, the Cowboys really should probably think about running DeMarco Murray a little bit more. I mean, he only had, what, 15 carries for 86 yards? DeMarco Murray is a hoss. He's a top five running back as far as overall and ratings in this game. Man, you need to feed him the football more. You need, he needs to be right up there with Trent Richardson, with Adrian Peterson. He needs to be getting the ball. Yeah, he doesn't. He has 19 carries. I mean, but I don't know. I guess I go back to my whole soapbox. I I just don't. I don't think I would give my guy the ball 30 times a game. But then again, um, I don't know. I don't have a Demarco Murray. I don't have an Adrian Peterson. So it's really not fair for me to say on my end. The next game, you got the Bills with a big win against the Eagles. What has happened to the Eagles? I mean. First, they start off real slow, and then they get it figured out. Then they look to make a run. Then the owner like gets real quiet again and kind of drops a bunch of games in a row. Just confusing for me. The Bills get four takeaways on the day. Uh, they only allow 51 yards rushing. Um, just not a whole lot to talk about for the Eagles. I mean, you only put up 10 points. Foles turns the ball over four times. LaShawn McCoy, I mean, you talk about – uh, DeMarco Murray only get 19 carries. Well, LaShawn only gets 10. That's absolutely terrible. He only gets 37 yards rushing. And uh, the Bills get a much-needed win as they try to keep um, some playoff hopes alive. But uh, they get a big, ro- a big win on the road as the AFC kind of flexes those muscles and shows that they're uh, the, the more powerful conference that, again this week. I, t- I- wholeheartedly agree with you on on all counts i mean four take a uh, four turnovers it doesn't matter how good you are as a player behind the sticks you turn the ball over four times you're not gonna win many football games and Lashawn mccoy that is a travesty 10 carries for only 37 yards Lashawn mccoy is leading the league right now i believe with rushing touchdowns he's got like 15 on the season it's it's ridiculous and that's totally unacceptable you shouldn't be slinging the ball around that much in a 10 point game Yep, I agree. Next game is the Seahawks uh, winning against the Redskins. We've kind of made this uh, little pack that we won't talk about the Redskins as we continue to think about and pray for our buddy Clavin that had that horrific tragedy in his family. So we're just going to move right along. The Packers uh, winning against the Vikings 24-20. to We got to watch some of this on our show on Sunday. 
uh, was just a really interesting game uh, as it, it got down to the very close wire right at the end. But um, when you lose Teddy Bridgewater, uh, things like this are going to happen. You, it's going to be really difficult to win with the quarterback he has. Packers get four takeaways. Um, they hold the Vikings uh, to under 70 or uh, under their running back only had 58 yards rushing. They only they had uh, what is this under 70 total uh, as a team. But Case Keenum had to come in and play for the hurt Teddy Bridgewater. That's going to be a tough uh, quarterback to win with, even if you play tremendous defense like the Vikings do. Uh, but they lose a game in the division that no one wants to win uh, in the NFC Central. So the Packers with a nice win on the road, 24 to 20. And don't sleep on these Packers. These, I mean, Duvall coming back, uh, he is known to sling the ball around a good bit, and he's got the quarterback to do it with Aaron Rodgers, and he's got the talent around him. I mean, the Packers, if they manage to squeak in and win the NFC North, look out. They could be dangerous in the NFC playoffs. Yeah, I've had some tremendous run-ins with Duvall. I haven't talked to him since, spoken with him since he's been back. Uh, but if he stays and gets that team figured out, uh, he's going to be a tough team to deal with. Then in what could have been the game of the week, the Chiefs winning 34-21 to against the 9-4 and Patriots. This was a big game for both teams. You'd expect it to be a little bit closer, especially since the Patriots were at home. Uh, but it's Jeremy coming through for his team and showing up with a big win when he needed. Tyler Bray playing just a hair better than he has this season. A touchdown and an interception, but, you know, a pretty decent Efficiency day, 46 carries for 237 yards. Okay, so now that I'm looking at these stats, it pretty much tells me everything I needed to know. This was probably definitely a sim game. And again, we don't really talk about sim games. This definitely had to be a sim game because these stats are outrageous. And that sucks because that was a big game for both of those teams. And uh, that may be a big sim win for Jeremy as he uh, makes his round to the playoffs. Next game up is the 6-7 and seven Titans whipping up on the 6-7 and seven Colts. I thought that this was going to be another much better game than what it ended up being. Every time I seem to say that, it ends up being uh, a simulated game. But this one looks like it probably was played. So we can actually talk about this one. Sam Bradford with a solid, solid day. He goes 13 for 19 for 225 and a touchdown. Um, they get that two-headed monster running back game going over here. 12 carries for Davis, 11 for Lorenzo, both, you know, with decent yards. They, they get right close to that 100-yard mark. Um, and they turn Andrew Luck over three times. Andrew's turned the ball over a lot this year. Seems like when he doesn't, that they win, and when he does, they lose. Doesn't sound like rocket science, but that seems to be a struggle for some owners like myself. But the the Titans get a much needed win, uh, a big win against the Colts, thirty one to thirteen on the road. I I really like the Titans squad. I really like uh, what their owners doing. I like the direction they're going. They don't quite have enough talent yet, but. Again, I think another year getting some players, especially with the draft loading up and on some uh, on some quality players. I, I think the Titans and the Jaguars <laughs> both might give Emo a run for his money in that in, in that AFC South. Yeah, the thing that sucks about the Titans is we had that owner leave us. Uh, I think it's been a couple of seasons now, but he ends up releasing like five of the top salary guys and uh, really jacked up their salary cap. So I don't know what their salary cap looks like. Um, but I know it's probably not a great situation. So hopefully that's not terrible, and that could be an impressive Titan squad as they uh, are really young and uh, seem to play really good defense. They just got to get a few little things figured out. But let's take a quick look at Week 14. There's not a whole lot of games left. I mean, it's pretty late. Uh, we're actually going to be due for advance tomorrow. Um, somebody talked about early advance, but I don't know if that's going to happen. You only got three games left. You got the 49ers at 75 uh, on the road to face the 6-6 six and six Seahawks. Uh, I like the 49ers in this. They impressed me this week, whereas the Seahawks, then again, you don't know what Seahawks team is going to show up. Sometimes they show up and play tremendous defense, um, and sometimes they get blown out. But uh, I like the 49ers in this one. Who do you like? 
Um, as much as it pains me to say it, I'm going to have to side with the 49ers as well. I just don't trust Junior enough as an owner with the Seahawks. He is very up and down, and I just I think Gaddy's going to be more consistent. And he's I think right now he's got his stuff figured out, but that may change next week. Absolutely. Uh, next up, you got the Falcons against the Redskins again. We kind of made a pact not to talk about the Redskins game. So we'll move to the very last game that's due. Pepper, I don't know if he's back, if he's still on vacation, or what the deal is there. Uh, I think I've seen uh, Dunn talking uh, with him today a little bit, and I think he's probably still in New York. So I'm not even sure that this game is going to get played here. Uh, but I think if it's played, if it's not played, if uh, Pepper gets like his six-year-old son to play, that – his team is still way better and that they're going to whip up on the Cowboys one way or the other. You know what? I'm going to actually go against you. I think uh, Pepper might be due for a letdown, and I think the Cowboys might be due for an upset. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. So week 14 is almost in the books. Uh, it went by pretty fast. It'll be interesting to see how week uh, 15 goes. Uh, just because the holidays are starting to get here. Sometimes those things can go fast. Sometimes they can go slow. Now I'm starting to think that Jeremy's uh, fooling with us a little bit uh, with these Manning photos. I don't know what that's all about. It kind of made sense last offseason. But now I think you're just being a jerk, Jeremy, and just kind of keeping uh, just the Manning stuff up here a little too much. You really need to to quit it that's just no bueno it's no good let's take a, a quick look at your playoff races as the playoffs are right around the corner my number one team and number one in your hearts the denver broncos are actually in second place but they're first in their division at 11 and 2 the texans have quietly and i don't know how he's done this but he has very quietly put together an 11 and 2 season he is the omfo champion i think that some of us forget that at times because uh, we fall in love with the Raiders and the Broncos and the Jets and all those other teams, and we don't really talk a whole lot about the Texans. But then you got the uh, the Jets at ten and three uh, with the third seed, the fourth seed uh, with the Ravens at seven to six, just tightly holding on as the Browns are hoping that they'll just drop a couple of more games. The Raiders at the fifth seed at ten and three, by far the hardest fifth seed ever uh, to be in the OMFL, and then the nine and four. Uh, Chiefs uh, finish up the AFC with the sixth seed. Uh, the Patriots with that big sim loss. The Bills with that big game this week that they won. And the uh, Browns with a big win this week. They're all hanging in there. The Browns really only hope is to win their division, where the Bills and the uh, Pats are trying to squeeze in uh, with a wild card. And this season is quickly coming to end. What are your thoughts about the AFC playoff hunt? Well, being – headlong in it uh it's quite interesting to see the broncos my team bounce from fifth seed to first seed to second seed back to fifth seed I, i've uh this is my best season i've ever had in omfl with 11 wins and i could still potentially be a sixth seed in the playoffs that's how tough the afc is yeah, it just takes one bad game, and uh, things can be over for you quickly. Uh, I like your Broncos, though. I know you you, you got to kind of do what you do, but I still like your Broncos. The NFC is a completely different story. It's not nearly as top-heavy and more well-rounded. So you got the uh, Rams at 10-3 and three with the number one seed. Pepper and his Giants at 9-3 and three with the number two seed. The Saints, who quietly had a very good season, the three seed at 9-4. and four. Uh, The Packers, who've kind of made a run here lately at six and seven, the fourth seed, um, the Buccaneers, even though they dropped the big game this past week, uh, they're your fifth seed at eight and five. And the 49ers have snuck back in there, fellas. They are the number six seed at seven and five. Um, then you got the Eagles, the Hawks and the Cardinals. In my opinion, the, the Cardinals season is over. It is done. Hang it up. Uh, the Seahawks are, they have a big game this week. It'll be interesting to see if they can beat the 49ers. If they beat the 49ers, they're still in it. If they lose, though, their season, I think, is going to be over. And the Eagles also cannot afford to drop another game. The 49ers um, are going to be a tough team to keep out of the playoffs. It'll be interesting to see if they make a run here. They've been kind of up and down also. What are your thoughts about the NFC? Well, the NFC, it, it, uh, it's, it's D Money's division. It's D Money's conference right now. I mean, and, and I think he's kind of, he's starting to figure out his stride right now, but I really, really actually like the race in, down here for the fifth and sixth seed. I think 
every team that's up there right now has a legitimate chance if they went out to sneak in there and get into the playoffs. Yeah, I really like um, the Giants. If he is he able to come back and and pick up where he left off, I, I remember him saying he was going to miss like three of the next four games or whatever with this trip to New York. So sometimes that can throw a kink at the wrench. And if it does, I really like Dave to come out. But also the team that you are really excited about, and that's the Packers. Um, you know, he was over there with the Texans forever and ever and ever, and uh, just kept winning, uh, getting himself to championship game after championship game. Um, I would not be shocked if he makes a run. I mean, he jumped out really big on the Raiders and made the Raiders make a comeback on him. Uh, he hung in there tight with the Vikings this week with a solid win on the road. I like overall uh, the Packers to make a run. Uh, I mean, the Rams are solid, but I don't know. Something just happens in the playoffs where it's like D-Money gets bored with it or something and just kind of loses interest, and he never seems – to make that real run in the playoffs. Um, I like Dave to make a solid run, but I like your Packers just because I think that this break is going to knock Pepper off of his, uh, off of his game. And I think the Packers are going to make a good run. Yeah. With Duvall there. And like I said, with Aaron Rodgers and the weapons hit uh, Duvall has at his disposal. Um, if, if he can get in and he can lock up even a, a four seed, uh, he's going to be really dangerous to play because he's going to bring his A game offensively. He may not bring his A game defensively, and he might be a shootout, but if you get in a shootout with him, look out. Yeah, I agree with you. So that's it. That's this week in the OMFL uh, for week 13. It was a, a fun week. I'm glad that you were able to join me. Not a whole lot of games to look at in week 14 just because things have progressed here so quickly. But before you know it, we will have advanced uh, I know that you were asking me if we could do a show on Saturday. I'm actually going to be on the road, and so that might be a, a good thing. Uh, I won't be at home, and so uh, maybe I can squeeze out and we can actually knock a show out on Saturday uh, afternoon or Saturday night sometime, especially since advances on Friday. We can kind of catch it early and have a lot of games to talk about. I'm not sure who all joined us here tonight, but thank everybody who come out and joined us. I've seen W. Dunn jumped in here for just a little bit, but I don't think he was – uh, getting things to work out so he didn't stay very long. So with uh, our last thoughts on the night, why don't you uh, lead us on out and give us your last thoughts on week 13. Uh, week 14 is pretty much in the books, and just kind of your overall thoughts as the season comes to an end here. Well, um, I I personally am very surprised uh, with uh, the team I inherited this season, the Denver Broncos. I they I didn't I knew they were good. I didn't realize how good. And uh, – uh, if if we can get in and get and get punching, I think we got a good shot in the playoffs. Um, AFC though is a tough it's a tough road to hoe every week. Every week you're facing somebody with a winning record. It looks like it's it's plumby ridiculous. Um, but I, I like the way the season's going overall. Everybody's playing playing good quality games, and you're seeing a lot of games being broadcast, which is always fun to kind of catch up on. And uh, I'm actually excited, more excited about the draft and stuff. I'm ready for off season, even though I'm in the playoff hunt. I'm ready for off season. I'm I'm ready to start free agency and draft, and let, let's get let's get some draft talk going. Yeah, this week against the Steelers made me get ready for the off season too. I'm I'm ready to fill in a couple of holes that I have and uh, start over again and and try to make another run at the playoffs. And trust me, I'm pulling for you in the AFC. I've got my championship uh, under my belt and. Uh, Nothing would do me better than to see you get a championship under your belt and uh, get one for uh, the home team over there. And so it will be fun to see how things play out. it would be fun to see how things go. I'm, I'm glad that you were able to join me. I was kind of getting tired of doing these shows myself. It's kind of a little boring to listen to my own voice. And so uh, hopefully we get W done to come back, maybe even throw some hot seat in here. It would be fun to do some kind of like pardon the interruption type stuff. So we'll see how these things go and if we're able to find some times that fit both of us and kind of get a little co-show going on, we can start adding some other fun things that we can start talking about instead of just walking through these games. So it's been a fun year so far. It's a very tight race in the AFC. What's going to be really fun to see is if the NFC can even match up uh, with the AFC in that Super Bowl game whenever that gets here. It's going to be here before we know it. So. Before we know it, me and you are going to get to talk some draft. Uh, I think we're going to have a, a Buckman's big board. It's going to show up here sooner or later. So I'm excited about hearing about some potential draft picks, seeing how the draft tracks out. But 
before we get there, guys, we got some good football ahead of us. It is uh, winter football time. It's cold. Uh, teams are making a run for the playoffs, and uh, it's going to be a fun season to watch it come to a close. So thank you, Wynn, for joining me. Uh, thank you guys for listening to the show. Uh, I can't wait to do it again. Let's try to talk on AOL. We'll find a time on Saturday that fits you. We'll make it happen on Saturday. We'll record the show, throw it out, get some guests, get some call-ins, get some type-ins, and uh, see how things go. So thanks for joining me. Thank you guys for listening, and we'll see you next week. Peace.